Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Porn Star Confessions. Today I have got Dom Yamas, so welcome, Dom. Thank you. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. So, before everyone thinks I had like a full on stroke, I just want to address something. I just got my teeth done in Mexico, so if it sounds like I have a lisp or it sounds like I had a stroke, that's why I'm still getting used to talking. Oh. But enough about me. Um, Dom, how. How did you first get into porn? Um, so I've always been into porn ever since I can remember. Um, you know, growing up, my I used to steal my older brother's like penthouses and playboys. Um, we kind of had this thing like I'd steal them from him, then he'd steal them back from me, um, back and forth. And uh, you know, I'd steal like his videos and stuff. So um, I just was maybe exposed to it a little too early. I don't know. Maybe this started like when I was around 10, 11. Um, and then it just kind of became a sort of a lifelong, you know, um, I wouldn't say obsession, but um, interest, like heavy interest um, sexually. So, you know, like every guy always kind of thought about it, um, but never really sort of, it wasn't in the, <laughs> the, the career path or the trajectory that, that I was on. Um, and uh, it wasn't up until recently, maybe about 10 months ago, um, and it was really honestly after the pandemic and just sort of the craziness of the past three years, um, and then things were kind of coming to um, uh, a pass for me um, career-wise as well. Um, I was sort of really unhappy with my, you know, my career, and so um, I just started thinking about it more and more, and like everyone during the pandemic, I was watching more porn. Um, I was on Twitter a lot, and it seemed like literally every fucking day there was like some new guy, you know, with like a new OnlyFans posting content. Um, I started to see more and more people like, you know, doing it with masks. So that kind of emboldened me. I started to think, oh, you know, maybe I, I just wear a fucking mask like that. I don't have to worry about people finding out. So um, long story short, I just started researching it, looking into it more and more um, at first because I'm bi, sort of wanted to start, um, recently bi, wanted to start on sort of the straight side of things. <clears throat> and uh, that just was fucking impossible, dude. Like, studio after studio. I'm sure you've heard all the stories. Like, I mean, yeah. the fucking stars have to be, like, <laughs> aligned. It has to, I mean, so I just, I was like, fuck it, you know, um, I'll just start, you know, kind of exploring the, the gay shit. And um, I had a couple collabs um, one of the people who I collaborated with <clears throat> was good friends with Alex Tikas, who was like one of my idols, like, um, porn wise, like I just, you know, really, um, worshiped his career and, you know, what, what he had accomplished and all of that, that, I, and, you know, he's like a fucking star. <laughs> so, um, so I was like, holy shit. So for whatever reason, like the next thing I know, um, I'm shooting an orgy <laughs> with, uh, Alex Tikas. Um, Killian Knox, uh, Brody Fox, like it just was like fucking mind blowing. <laughs> I was looking around like, what the fuck is happening? Um, and then things just kind of took off from there. Um, he um, is one of the best people like I've met in this industry. Um, he, I, I probably owe my career to him. Um, you know, he's been an incredible mentor. Um, you know, we um, ended up doing, I think, like, four or five orgies. Like, I don't know how, like, this orgy became a thing, but we ended up doing, like, four or five orgies like, in succession. And then um, uh, he stepped back, took a break for a little bit, and um, was actually um, uh, my videographer um, for, um, like, another four or five projects, um, which was just an incredible experience. I mean, imagine having like one of the top porn stars like shoot your shit. Like, <laughs> um, and to this day, like I've never had anyone shoot me like as well as he did. Um, just because I think porn stars like innately sort of know what looks good and like, where to put the camera as a performer. And um, like just the angles he would cut. I was like, dude, how did you do that? Like I asked him once. I was like, what the fuck are you doing this? Like you make me look amazing. And uh, he was like, you know, I just shoot what I think is hot. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, so that was sort of how it all started. Um, it had been marinating for a while. And then I just reached a point, you know, especially with the pandemic. And, you know, like, shit in Ukraine and Russia talking about, like, nukes flying. And, you know, like, I was just like, what the fuck am I waiting for? You know, like, life is short. This is something I want to do. Um, you know, am I going to harm anyone by doing it? No. Um, and, uh, you know, really the, the only sort of 
um, detriment to me would be like my family, you know, my mother in particular, like, I, I don't know how she would really feel about it. But the more I thought about it, I, I, the more I knew that she would like, ultimately, if she found out, just accept me. And, you know, so um, it's really only a handful of people who I would kind of be concerned about if they found out. And I know that at the end of the day, if they did find out that they would, you know, ultimately be okay with it. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do porn. <laughs> How old are you now? Oh, dude, I knew you were going to ask me that question. Um, I don't like the 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 age game. Um, not to sound like a girl or anything, but I feel like once people find out your age, they kind of like put you in a box, you know, and pigeonhole you. Oh. And, um, I just feel like, you know, right now, I'm kind of mysterious. Like, if I shoot with a young dude, people think, okay, he's the daddy. If I shoot with, like, an older dude, people are like, okay, he's kind of the young you know, the young buck. So just like to have a little bit of mystery. Um, I think it was hysterical that you and Jesse got into an argument about like millennial and the cutoff from millennials. <laughs> um, so I will say that I am a proud Gen Xer. <laughs> I'm at least old enough to legally run for president. Um, so just to give you an idea, but um, I don't know. I just kind of, kind of leave. Don't you only have to be 35 to run for president? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I'll tell. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you off camera, but for now, okay. I, I want the fans to kind of just focus on me as a performer instead of like, oh, this dude's you know, X, X years old. <laughs> Does that make sense in a way? Yeah. No, okay. I get that. Like me personally, I give a shit. I was just more. Yeah. I mean, I also don't care, like age is like a number, right? Like it's not how you actually feel. Like I know people who are like fifty years old and like they have one foot in the grave. You know, like. They're chronically ill, they have diabetes, they're overweight, like, you know, they're sedentary. And then you have people who are like 85 who are thriving, like they're doing yoga, they're swimming, they're, you know, like they're mentally yeah. all there. So I really think age is just, it's like this construct that we create, especially in our society, in order to like limit people or assign like, you know, certain attributes to people. So that's fascinating because I mean, my mom's 74 and she could literally run circles around me. She still rides her bike 20 miles a day. She does an hour Zumba class every morning. Right. Like, she's like the fucking energizer bunny. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I get that, but I don't know. That's, that's interesting. Um, the one thing you said though in the beginning that I wanted to go back to yeah. was you had talked about masks and I've never, uh, I'm curious what your thoughts are, because, like, I'll get people all the time, and they're like, oh, I'd love to shoot with you, but I would need to wear a mask. And when I very first started in this industry, like, years and years ago, yeah. I tried it maybe four or five times, and every single video I ever did with someone in a mask just, really? like, bombed horrifically. Yeah. However, the flip side is I've seen, like, there's that one guy who always, he's black, he always wears a mask, but he's the top. Right. And, like, he's super, super popular. Oh. So, like, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. It's like the Mask Bandit, I think that's his name. Yeah. What you're talking about. Um, I think if it's done well, it can be super, super hot. Like, um, everyone's sort of mask, the mask jock, like... Um, the dude is, I mean, he's ripped, like, and his content is fire. Like, I mean, his, you know, he performs with like all the top people it's always like high quality productions um and there's definitely like something hot about like you know not knowing what this dude looks like <laughs> like i think that's really um so it can be done well and that's part of his brand like i think if it's part of someone's brand um like i just shot an orgy same thing the dude didn't want to show his face um you know i was kind of hesitant um but i kind of let him join and i, I just think it added something different like his you know his content's good um, so I think if it's done well and like the person's sort of consistent about it, um, I prefer that honestly, than like videos where they just like cut off the person's face altogether or don't show like anything, you know, I'd rather know you know, there's a whole person there than just a torso <laughs> or someone's like dick, you know, um, going in it. Well, like, yeah. Do, do you feel like the position matters though? Cause I feel like it's easier for a top to be masked. Because, like, if, if I put myself in the consumer yeah. position, like, if the top's wearing a mask, I really don't give a shit. Right. If the bottom's wearing a mask, that would... I, 
Yeah, I guess it depends. I don't know. There are a few like masks bottoms out there. There's this one dude who's like, I swear to God, he's like the hottest fucking bottom I've ever seen. Like, and I still cannot to this day figure out who the fuck he is. I've asked like everyone on Twitter, like, um, but he wears a mask and like it fucking drives me nuts, dude. Like that shit is so hot. So I mean, I think again, it like depends on the person and like the you know. I get the production and all of that, but I see what you're saying. Like, um, I'm getting more and more okay with it. Like I, I used to feel the same way, like, fuck it. If you're not going to show your face, like, you know, I'm not going to film with you. Um, but, um, I'm starting to get more and more of that. And, um, I, there's actually a bottom that I'm supposed to shoot with next week. Um, it's like a little twink dude who, you know, wants to wear a mask. I'm like, okay, you know, so, so we'll see how it goes. Like, you know, if the fans don't like it and they respond negatively, then I'll stop doing it. But I figure, you know, why not give these people a chance? Like if they're at least sort of willing to, you know, put themselves out there like 80%, <laughs> leave that 20% um, covered up. Yeah, because like, uh, I don't know if you know Married Straight and Bisexual Deputy. Yeah. Like that's their brand too. Oh, yeah. And it works really well for them super hot yeah yeah i've actually chatted with one of them can't remember which one or a couple times but um yeah they're like in idaho or kansas or some like <laughs> small small town like that yeah they're in like the middle of nowhere but if you get the opportunity to shoot with them i would highly recommend it. yeah they're both yeah. super cool laid back chill easy to work with like yeah can't say enough good things yeah and that i mean that whole sort of you know secretive like dl by vibe is like super super hot for sure so and i mean a cop what's sexier than a fucking cop that's like every game that's fantasy right so um or deputy whatever he is yeah um so yeah. you've shot so you've shot with them like dude you've shot with like so many people it's like incredible um, yeah no i mean and you've been they all work together but a lot of them stand out though yeah Who's the like, most favorite person you've ever shot with? Not to put you on. Oh, shit. Like, best scene, best mind-blowing sex, everything just kind of gelled, like, you know, you were firing on all cylinders, like. Damn. Hey, it's a hard question, I'm sure. Ooh. Okay, top. Best sex I ever had on, on camera, Ari Coyote hands down really okay i don't i don't know what it was about him yeah. but just like it was like you ever meet someone you're like just like biting your lower lip and you can just feel the sexual tension yeah. and you're just like oh, yeah. damn it i want to rip this person's clothes all right all right can't explain it um and then best ongoing sexual chemistry just you dubai hands down okay Okay. How about you? Um, there have been a few. Um, I would say, God, let's, yeah, I should have, see, I shouldn't have asked you that question because so I, I can't answer it myself. Um, well, ongoing sexual chemistry, there's this dude, um, he's actually a good buddy of mine. His name is Gabe Steele. Um, I shot one of my first videos with him. Um, he is, um, more into like amateur like wrestling like you know like real legit like gay wrestling like without the sex like i think it's more like eroticized um it's not like the fake shit where they i mean he's like an actual wrestler it's not like the fake shit where they you know pretend to wrestle and then fuck each other in the end um so i mean our the our first collaboration i was do literally everything you just said like the the chemistry was like incredible the sex was incredible um and then i've collaborated with him um in a couple of orgies and then also we've done you know some one-on-ones and three ways together too and each and every time it's just like it's it's really really good so um wow. in terms of the best um there's actually this new dude just came out um was Mexican. I have a thing for other Latinos. Um, and Mexicans, for some reason, drive me crazy. Um, is, he goes by the name Andres Tex-Mex. Um, and he shot a scene with Aaron Trainer, um, who was actually one of my first um, scenes in porn. It's absolutely, like, lovely person. Um, and he's been a really... Well, you've interviewed him, so, you know. Um, he's been, like, a really good mentor to me as well. But, um, so there's Andres Tex-Mex... Um, 
saw that scene with Aaron, I was like, I've got to do with this guy. So hit him up and um, yeah, literally like just fireworks, like from beginning to end. So is it kind of sex like stays with you for a couple of days afterwards? Like you just, you can't get it out of your mind. Like, um, so it was that good. Yeah. But there have been a few, like I hate to limit it to just one, you know, but yeah. Okay. Have you, don't say the person because I don't, like condone talking shit about yeah. any person or any studio. But have you ever had bad sex on oh, camera? Oh, of course. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And I won't name names. Like, I'm not, I won't, you know, I've been warned to actually never name names um, because there are a lot of people I, you know, I like to trash. But um, there are a lot of lovely people that, you know, like Aaron, Alex, that I mentioned. A um, lot of lovely people in this industry, but I'm sure, you know, having been in this much longer than I have, but there are also a lot of sort of not so nice people. Um, but yeah, just, um, you know, I've had bottoms who weren't cleaned out, which, you know, I can understand like happens here and there, but you know, I show up, I'm prepared. Like, I know there's a lot more to like, you know, being a bottom than there is to being a top, um, in terms of preparation. But, um, it's like, dude, you know, this is happening. <laughs> like, come on, you know, at least like make the effort to clean it out. So, so there's that. And then there's also just like bottoms that, and I'm sure you've experienced this too. You fuck who are just like stiff as fucking cardboard. Like, you know, like you try to lift their leg or something. It's like, it's like fucking a mannequin, you know? So, um, yeah, I've definitely had some bad, bad sex on camera, but you work with it. You try to make it look hot. Um, you know, you get a really good editor um, who edits the shit out of it and, um, and ultimately make it look good. So I've also had people who, um, don't necessarily look like their pictures or recent pictures. Um, that's happened to me a couple of times. Um, and, um, you know, some of the collabs I haven't uh, published and probably never will, but, um, you know, a few I've done some creative editing with as well. So, oh, I see. you've never had bad sex on camera, like ever, but 10 plus years. I think... My biggest mm -hmm. complaint is when bottoms can't bottom. Yeah. And what I mean by that is like, and I, I've spoken openly about this in so many of these videos, but like there's this whole idea, like people message me and I'm sure they message you all the time. Like, oh, hey, Dom, I'm so tight. Yeah. Like, fuck no, yeah. dude, that doesn't sound Not fun. Yeah. That sounds like fucking Very. torture. So I can think of like four or five guys I will never shoot with yeah. again. Like, I like right. them. The chemistry yeah. is good, but they just could not relax. And it's like, wasn't well, tight good? Like, no. And like, I've had people like, oh, isn't tight good? And I'm, I grab them around the wrist and I squeeze. And I'm like, does that yeah. feel good? They're like, no. I'm like, exactly. Yeah. Imagine putting your fucking dick in a vice right. grip. It fucking oh, yeah. hurts. Yeah. Like, I had one dude I shot with where I was literally for the rest of the night after he left, I had a fucking bag of ice cubes on my Jesus. dick. Because it was so fucking sore. Oh it felt like the entire inside. I was just like, oh, yeah. God. Yeah, no, I completely relate. I hate it. Um, I'll take a loose hole any day <laughs> or, like, a tight <laughs> hole. Um, the looser, although you have the opposite of the spectrum, too, where, like, he's, the bottom's actually too fucking loose, and it's, like, fucking the ground. It's no. like you're fucking the Grand Canyon or something. It's like, um, but yeah, I'm right there with you on that. And that's that's definitely happened to me a couple of times too. That and also I find a lot of bottoms who shot studio porn, um, they're not used to going for more than like 10, 15 minutes without a break, you know? And so I'll be like fucking like really into it, you know, like I know like I'm getting great, you know, footage, like I'm open for the camera, like all and I'm like, oh, I need a break. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, like we literally just started like um so yeah that can be that can be annoying too and like consistently like throughout the shoot like every 10 15 minutes like they can't fuck for more than like 10 minutes at a time i'm like really like so i don't know you've done more studio work than i have like that's like is that a thing like studio work is so much starting stuff yeah. like i would say my average studio shoot was like eight to 12 hours right. on set. And I don't think we ever fucked for more than three minutes. Right. Yeah. 
without like a 15, 20 minute break. I yeah. mean, it's ridiculous. But I mean, as far as like bad quality of sex or bad partners, I've never had one as far as my own content, but studio content, absolutely. Because yeah. like for me, I pick my like for my own content, I pick based on personality. Right. Like, I don't pick based on dick size or race or gender or any of that yeah. shit. I don't give a fuck. But, like, I've been on some studio shoots where, like, the other guy walks on scene. He's just like, <laughs> like, he thinks he's fucking king shit. I don't even know how the motherfucker fit his ego in the goddamn front door. And I'm just like, oh, oh God. God. Fuck my <laughs> life. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so you definitely, I, I know you've stopped studio work for the most part. Like, I forget, you, there's like one studio that you said you would work for again, like if they ask, which one is it? I uh, won't say which oh, studio okay. it is, but it, it's some um, super, super dark Oh, shit. wow, okay. Like, super really? dark. Okay. Because yeah. like, I don't have a problem with like BDSM or dog yeah. sub, but this shit was like 10 steps beyond that. And I'm just like... Wow. The second I when I fly home, if I'm like emotionally fucked up for days or yeah. a week, it ain't worth it no matter how much you fucking Yeah, pay me. that's crazy. But yeah, it's just I don't know. But one thing you mentioned though that I wanted to go back to is are like I'm sure you're familiar with the the expression uh never meet your heroes, you'll always be disappointed, right? Yeah. Like it sounds like you've had the opposite. <laughs> Um, I have, yeah. Um, there's actually another um performer, um, Ray Dalton. He's like a porn legend. Um, and uh, I, I don't, I, he, he hosts a series of um parties like throughout the country, different cities, like major cities called Fornication. Um, which is yeah, yeah so you're familiar. So um, great like concepts, great brands. Um, super successful. Um, and so I would go to you know a couple of those like just as you know a fan just to like fuck or whatever um and i don't know i met him and i guess we hit it off and um he's been like amazing like just like hands down like a friend a mentor like you know um he's like coached me guided me um inspired me like lifted me up when i fucking felt like shit and giving up on porn like um and there have been a few people like that um i'm like good buddy jeffrey armani um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, I've met some really, really good people, but like Ray, just being a porn legend that he is, like, was definitely a hero, and he more than like surpassed my my expectations in, in terms of what I thought he would be like. And then same thing for Alex Tikas, like, just <clears throat> one of the loveliest like human beings I've ever met. So just completely like you know like blows your mind like in terms of you know what like you think a hero or an idol could be like, and then they just go up above that. Like, yeah. So well, Ray Dahl, no, like, cause I've interviewed him. It hasn't aired yeah. yet though, but like, he, dude, you're like, you're going at an insane pace with these interviews. Like crazy. You have like so many like top people coming up too. Like every time I see your banner, it's like, boom, 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 upcoming, upcoming. Like, so you're killing it. So congrats. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, Ray is. I feel like he's different though, because like he's his motivation's different, and and he says this in my interview with him. But like a lot of people get into porn for either money or fame, whereas Ray got into porn to create a springboard to do the shit that he's actually passionate about. Which is and like what I guess. What I'm saying with that is, like, what is your end goal? What What would you like to see come out of? Why am I doing this? Um. Uh. Well, I'm not in it to be the most famous porn star. You know, um, not in it for you know fame, fortune. I'm really, honestly, not even in it for the money. Um. I mean, the little bit of money that I'm making is nice. You know, it's extra income. Um. It definitely helps. Um. But I'm really at this point more like breaking even because. You know, it's expensive to pay for the videographer and the editing and, you know, this, that, and the other. So, um, the location, um, all of that. So, um, especially because I've been doing more and more sort of big, you know, orgy, like, group productions, like, I've been producing them. So, I've been 
kind of financially investing more in that. Um, I'm in it because I love porn, dude. Like, that's bottom line. Like, I love porn. Um, I love um, sex. I love um, sort of the freedom that it gives to people. And also, I think it provides, like, uh, a really important sort of service for society. Um, I think to be in this business, to an extent, you have to be a bit of an exhibitionist um, and, uh, you know, be okay with that. And um, um, so I think, I mean, there are things that I want to do, like, you know, every porn career obviously has a shelf life, you know. Um, and uh, so, I mean, there's definitely different avenues and areas that I want to explore, um, you know, with within porn, but um, I, I do it just because I freaking love it. Like, that's what's really, like, the bottom line. Like, that's why I decided to, you know. But what do you love about it? Um, I love, uh, well, I, I mentioned like the, you know, the exhibitionism. Um, I also love the voyeuristic aspect of it. Um, I love the, um, idea of someone else getting off on it. Um, that, that's a huge like turn on as well. Um, and I mean, I love the fact that it, um, kind of forces people to be, at their best sexually, um, you know, um, with another person, another partner and connected very intensely for, um, you know, a very like short period of time. Like I think it almost forces, um, people to, um, get to know each other, at least sexually, obviously very quickly. <laughs> um, so I think sort of all of those things combined, like, um, I think are very exciting, but also very titillating at the same time. So, and, okay, there's a couple of things to dissect yeah. there. Actually, I want to kind of break down the psychology of this because it's interesting. Like when you would go to like Ray Dalton's fornication parties, and for those of you watching, it's just basically like a, a massive sex party. Do you get off? Like, let's say you and another guy are going at it. Do you get off on other people there watching you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah. No, I mean, not everybody. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I do kind of like to put on a show a little bit. Um, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not fucking someone in order to turn on other people. I'm obviously doing it for my own pleasure, but, um, yeah. yeah. I know I'm a good top. I know I know how to fuck. And uh, I'm proud of that. So if other people want to enjoy watching that, then why not? You know, so. Um, but it's not like the end all be all of, you know, why why I do it. No, no, it's like the icing on of the Of course, yeah. I mean, there are times where I don't like that at all. You know, like if it's a creepy old man or something and he's like trying to touch me while I'm fucking, so I'm like, fuck off. Like, um, but, um, you know, like in, in those cases, like I don't like an audience, you know, um, but um, yeah, it's um, you've, you've never you've never like gotten off on the idea of like people watching or, um, you know. No, just the, the way you phrase that, because I've never talked about this in any of these yeah. interviews, but like. When someone tells me, like, they really enjoy my content or whatnot or, you know, all that, like, that's very flattering and, you know, it makes me feel good. But someone there watching in person, like, a cameraman, that's different because, you know, that's just. Well, that's yeah, part I don't of even the think the cameraman. Is, yeah. No. But I don't know if I could have sex at a sex party. That would just, really. I don't know. For me, it'd be awkward. Well, I mean, okay, so it's usually dark, right? Like, you usually can't see much. Like, um, so that's one thing right there. So there's kind of a sense of anonymity. Um, you know, you're probably not going to run into any of these people, like, in your everyday life anyway. So, you know, it's not like you're going to bump into Bob and, yeah, or, yeah. and like, you know, Bob's going to be like, oh, although that has happened to me a couple of times. Um, that's actually led to a couple of clients. Um because they saw me fucking, they were like, I want that guy, <laughs> like, um, but, um, yeah, I mean, so there's a certain level of anonymity to it, you know, would I get off on, like, a big, huge porn set with, like, you know, 10, you know, 
people like just kind of hanging out extras and this time probably not but i tend to tune that shit out anyway so um you know especially for a scene i'm like laser focused on that person and delivering a good scene um so yeah i mean i guess it's it's different um yeah it's different when in kind of a sex club environment so yeah no because like on a studio shoot like all the people there are irrelevant to me because you know it's work but like I've never really been watched like people are watching for enjoyment. I don't know. Like that would, I honestly think that would detract really? from me. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think, um, I don't know. I think, I, well, I don't know. I guess everyone's different. I, I mean, I think like, don't you have to kind of be a show off to an extent in order to be in porn? Like you have to enjoy kind of showing off your body, showing off like, you know, I mean, you're literally putting everything out there for, everyone to see so i mean you have to an extent be okay with other people millions of people thousands of people watching porn and watching you fuck right so that's kind of the way i look at it like when it's live and it's at a club or something it's more visceral and um i don't know i just um i i think everyone is intrinsically a voyeur i mean that's you know you enjoy watching other people you know, fuck. And so I think um, everyone has that voyeur inside of them. So just the flip side of that makes sense to me as well. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess the best way I can articulate it to you is it just throws the energy off of yeah. me. Because, like, I, I've never been into, like, orgies because it's too I, – I would rather, like, my attention be focused exclusively on you. But or if I will do a three way, it would have to be like well, three, you and yeah. your husband or you and your wife, like uh, two people that already have an established right. rapport. I can't do three strangers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see that, you know, but there's a huge market out there for orgies. And uh, most people, I would say, if you did a poll, and you should actually do this poll on your next, because uh, <laughs> I know you like polls. Um, you know, the percentage of people who like orgies or are turned on by orgies, I think, is probably proportionately high because most people have fantasized about being in that situation but in real life they probably will never you know um, participate or, or be in one so i think it just adds an extra level of like fantasy um or inaccessibility to um to that um but i mean plus orgies are fucking hot i'm sorry dude anyway <laughs> um but yeah okay no no let's, are, let's think a friendly guy right now how yeah. would you i agree with you on how would you word What's this poll? How would you word this poll? Like, would you do you prefer watching porn or orgies or one on one? Or how would you word it? Because we have to word it in such a way as to not elicit one answer right, or the other. All right. Um, I, well, what do you think is hottest to watch? Like, orgies, three ways, one on ones, solo. Um, something like that. I don't know. I just came up with that. Um, we can think about it, tweak it a little bit. Um, but yeah, three ways are good. Three ways are different because three ways, it's an odd number, right? So invariably, like one person is kind of always sort of left out, um, at least in terms of penetration. Um, so yeah, three ways, I've done them. I've done quite a bit of them, but um on a rare occasion, like we, where everything's clicking and everyone's sort of clicking, they, they can be like super hot and everyone's kind of, you know, um, simpatico. But I usually find that it's invariably one person ends up <laughs> kind of being left out of the mix, at least for part of it, you know. So, uh, yeah. but um, yeah, I don't know how, you know, the orgy thing, like it just kind of happens. Like, um, my fans go crazy for it. Like it's always like the highest, highest rated content on my only fans. Um, so I've just kind of kept up with it. And somewhere along the line after like the fourth or fifth one, I realized like, I'm actually good at organizing this shit, <laughs> like, you know, producing it, getting the performance together, um, you know, kind of wrangling everyone dealing with like last minute drama and substitutions and additions. And, um, 
So um, they've been pretty successful and well received. Um, the first one I did was actually just recently nominated for a Grammy. <laughs> we didn't win, but because we were up against like some glossy studios and whatnot. But um, there's definitely a huge market for it. So um, I don't want to exclusively do that. Obviously, um, I actually had a dude recently. I won't mention his name. Um, like hit me up on Twitter and start like I said, hey, you know what's up or whatever, because he. I um, just collaborated with a buddy of mine and um, it just all I said was, hey, and like the dude went off on like four paragraphs of like how I shouldn't be doing orgies and like how it's going to dilute my brand. And like yeah, I was just like, what the fuck, dude? Like all I said was, hello to you. Like I didn't ask for this unsolicited advice, you know? So um, even though I'm not into orgies, I think it's awesome that you're doing it. If it works for you. Absolutely fucking go yeah. for it. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Everyone's got an opinion, right? So um, I just, unless I specifically ask for your opinion, I'd rather keep it to yourself. <laughs> Especially on fucking Twitter. <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> so. Interesting. I'm curious, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't be closed-minded to an orgy. Just my personal apprehension yeah. would be that it would be a logistical nightmare just because I know, like, I'm sure you've had plenty of people cancel where it's just a one-on-one -on -one yeah. shoot. You know what I mean? So like, I'm just imagining in doing oh, yeah. an orgy, like, how do you it handle is. that? It's, it's a fucking nightmare, like literally. Um, and it's got to a point where like, after each one, I'd be like, I'm never fucking doing it again. <laughs> like, I told my videographer, I was like, this is it. Like, if I ever bring up a fucking orgy again to you, like, slap me, like, you know, like, spit on me, do whatever. Like, um, and then lo and behold, I find myself, like, you know, um, people reaching out to me or <clears throat> just, you know, everything kind of falling into place. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's always, like you know, people get sick or this last one I had, I had like two people get into car accidents. Like, um, so, I mean, there's always shit like logistically, um, you know, and then you just have like the usual flakes who like, you know, said, sure, I'll do it. And then they triple confirm and like, you know, <laughs> never fucking show up. So, um, so yeah, it can be really, really challenging and a huge headache, but when it comes together, dude, it's, fucking amazing like i organized this one for pig week and for lauderdale you know they have it every november and um i did it with this performer named bo nick um who is um like super super hot but um super super um, prolific as well um he puts out a lot of great content um and so yeah it was like 12 guys some really big names. Ray Dalton was actually in, in that one as well. Um, and just like everything just kind of clicked and came together. And um, it was it was just a phenomenal production. So, so yeah, when it works, it's great. It can be a nightmare. But um, I get a sense of satisfaction out of that, though, like kind of putting out fires. Because I do that in my civilian job, too, just like putting out fires and dealing with like crisis management. And so um, I think <clears throat> my regular career or profession has kind of allowed me to you know, to sort of segue that into, you know, um, putting this, this stuff together and dealing with um, those last minute sort of emergencies as well. Yeah. So if you don't mind me asking, what do you do for your civilian? Um, so my career trajectory has been very interesting. I um, was actually pre-med, my degrees in biology. Um, I actually did two years of medical school. So I'm a medical dropout. Yay. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. And uh, which is why I always love when you say like, oh, yeah, people have this idea of porn stars being like dumb, stupid, like illiterate, like. Um, you have a degree in biology, you're fucking smart. <laughs> right? um, but no, I mean, like 90% of the people you've had in your podcast are like highly intelligent, well-spoken, like educated, like, you know, like they're not dumb people in porn. Like, I mean, sure, there are, as you find in every profession, but I think by and large, like the majority of people I've met who have been doing this are like much more educated than like the general public um let's say so at any rate um so dropped out of med school thought i wanted to be an actor moved to new york city started acting um did like some off off broadway a bunch of student films realized i sucked at that um but while in between auditions i started waiting on tables and that kind of led to restaurant management and then from restaurant management i segued into retail management um which 
pretty much sucks, <laughs> as you can imagine. So that is my current civilian job is in retail management. Yeah. But it pays the bills, I would know. you know, pays the bills, pays off that that lovely medical school student loan debt. Um, so, but um, so you know, I'm working like 55, 60 hours a week. Um, so you know, between that and like trying to shoot content and I do all of my own like marketing, social media, like, you know, you can imagine like it, it, I have very little free time. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, <sighs> okay. Uh, I just gave you a lot to unpack there probably. Yeah, no, you, the very last thing actually, but I could never make a, a video specifically about this because i'd probably get blackballed but and i'm not going to say any platform specifically but and and i'm curious for those of you watching please let us know um if you've ever experienced this and if so how do you identify it but like me and you we both manage our own shit now hiring a social media manager that's one thing but I don't think a lot of people realize that a lot of performers actually will outsource their fan yeah. pages to India or China or yeah. wherever. And it's like, I, 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 how do I want to say this? I scratch my head because you take some performers like Riley mm -hmm. Reed the biggest female performer in the world like her number of subscribers has to be in the thousands if not tens right. or hundreds right. of thousands i mean she's making enough that she bought a nine million dollar house in malibu yeah, yeah, yeah. how any of those subscribers can delude themselves right. into thinking that they are actually chatting with riley oh, yeah. reed is oh, beyond yeah. me. i mean it's the same like famous like, actors, like you know, they're not running their own social media pages, you know. Um, in fact, most of them, I don't know, I yeah. got a person who does that, you know. So, um, but yeah, and you can tell most of the times, like, I can tell if someone's like doing their own shit, they're having like you know, some person out there do it, or even if they just hire. I mean, I've been hit up by so many people who are like, hey, do you want me to manage your social media? It's, you know, like, um, I would fucking love that, <laughs> but don't have the money, but. Plus, I'm a bit of a control freak, too. Like, I like having that personalized, yeah. like, aspect to it. Um, you know, I like to be in control of my posts when I'm posting, when I'm posting it. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you get someone who's that big, like, they're not going to have time to, to do their own shit like that. So it's just, it's so time consuming. There's literally nights where I've been, like, you know, after working a 11, 12-hour day, I'm home, like, you know, trying to post something like fall asleep on the phone just like you know trying to instagram post or whatever so yeah but like i feel like having a social media manager like someone to manage your instagram your twitter your all that that's one thing what i'm talking about specifically is when people outsource their fan uh, site so they'll promote like on twitter and instagram like oh hey come subscribe to my only fans so you can chat with me because that's like half my subscribers pay just so they can right. chat with me. And like, if I were to outsource that, that just feels unethical. Wrong. Sure. Yeah. It's un yeah. Um, and I think, um, it just does a disservice to everyone involved, you know? So, um, and I'm sure it happens and I'm sure there are people out there foolish enough to believe, you know, Oh, I'm talking to, bombed you know, or whatever she's she's on she's at the top of my list that's why I, that's why i mentioned her but um yeah i mean it's you know it is what it is unfortunately I, yeah. you know, well, it's just like i i definitely agree with you though that having that personal yeah. touch definitely makes a huge difference oh, yeah, for difference. sure you know like just do this shit yeah. yourself or if you can't respond just don't have anyone respond, but to lead someone on just, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, I it's, know. um, I mean, you're, you know, you're obviously a lot bigger than me and I'm sure you get a lot more, you know, fan requests, um, your Twitter as well, like over a hundred thousand. Right. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I try to shoot for, 
it really sort of depends on how much time I have during the day and like what projects I have going on that I want to promote. But like at like minimum, I try to do at least like one or two posts a day, um, even if I'm just like regurgitating or you know doing a snippet of a video that's already out there that like maybe people haven't seen yet, um, you know, on Twitter. So just a little something just to keep the interest up and my fans engaged. Instagram, dude, <laughs> my account was deleted at 20k. So, like, yeah, like, and I still to this day like don't know what the fuck, you know. Um, I think I just had like some angry person that morning. It was like, no, nope, I don't like you. You know, you're gay. You do porn. Delete. So, um, and I invested so much time like cultivating that. Like, you know, I'm not one of those people who just posts like, oh, this is me eating breakfast, or oh, this is my inspirational quote for the day. You know, like each like story was like its own little fucking mini Scorsese like picture. They fucking deleted all of that shit. So I've been kind of anti Instagram. Like I'm barely touching it these days like I post stuff here and there but I just can't invest that much time just to have it like but the rug like pulled out from beneath me potentially again you know so yeah. um but your I actually your just, shit is uh, amazing dude like your post like especially your Instagram is like so bleak and glossy sorry I'm oh, just no, grabbing a fan I was gonna ask maybe that was uh what's his name Gus in the background no. Always good. That's just me. Good. He is good. Got to take a nap at the moment. A pig. How long do pigs no. nap for? They oh, sleep a lot. God. They can sleep for hours really? and hours oh. and hours. Do they? Yeah. They're late. Do they like fuck. sleep through the night? Like, do they have like human hours? Like, yeah. do they sleep at night and they're like frolicking throughout the day? Yeah. Okay. That's. Cool. Yeah, no, they're super social. Like, half the time they're in the backyard, they just look like little baby cows just grazing in the wow. grass. But, yeah, no, they're amazing animals. Um, fuck, yeah, the Instagram thing. Actually, one of, not one of, my, the best fan I have, we were actually talking the other day about it, and she's like, why don't you post more underwear pics? And it's for that exact reason yeah, you just mentioned. Everyone- like, I know so many performers where like i mean i've had pictures flagged and taken down and it's like i'm wearing black underwear it's not like i have a raging heart on you can just kind of see that a dip yeah. is there and like boom, yeah. nope yeah flagged for whatever and i'm just like yeah i'm not yeah, risking it's that um shit. and it's like i really i honestly think it depends on like who the moderator happens to be that day like you know one moderator it may be like a little bit more edgy than another like it's just there's no fucking rhyme or reason to it you know so um but uh yeah so i'm i'm sort of I, maybe i'll get back into instagram at some point like and i'm definitely still engaged like i post you know i try to post consistently but i'm certainly not as invested as i should be so so what do you do? What are you passionate about outside of working six yeah, fucking hours a week? No idea how you do that. Yeah, form, um, the gym. Like that's how I relieve a lot of my stress. Um, it also, you know, is kind of a necessity in terms of doing porn and being in front of the camera. Um, you know, competing with you know some of these guys out there who want to be on their level, and you know who I'm talking about, right? Um, you've actually had one on your show, um, Gunner Stone, Mr. Gunner Stone. Um, dude, it's fucking impressive. But um, at any rate, um, so yeah, the gym. Um, but yeah. I love. I mean, do it at the end of the day. Do whatever yeah, makes you. Yeah, happy, I mean, you know, there's no one size right, fits all. Right. For so huge fan of the beach. Um, that's why I moved down here, South Florida. Um, I you know lived up north my whole life, and I was like, I'm fucking done with winters and the weather. So um, you know, and I think just being near the ocean, like, um, is very like healing and soothing, and um, you know, being on the sand. So I freaking love the beach. I love being outside. Um, so that's those are pretty much my bad movies. I love movies. Um, not, not porn movies. Well, I do love porn movies. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i'm a huge fan of cinema actually if i could go back and do it all over again um i obviously would not have gotten my degree in biology and gone to medical school i would have probably gone into film um and gone to film school um so yeah so 
I'm curious because I'll eventually make the same move you did. What was the straw that broke the camel's back where you said, fuck this, I'm going to Florida? Um, hmm, I think part of it was obviously the weather. Um, you know, I was at the time I was living in Pennsylvania and there were some days where I mean, it was like negative 30 degrees and I'm like loaded up, like, you know, walking to the gym, fucking freezing my nuts off and like, I mean, talk about like a motivation killer, like, you know, to even get up and get out to go to the gym, like you don't want to fucking go out in that kind of weather. Um, and late, literally day after day, you know, having to scrape ice and snow off of my car. Um, and it just got to the point where like, I'm sick of doing this shit, <laughs> like, you know, um, that combined with, um, at the time, like I wasn't out, but I kind of knew there, you know, there were some rumblings inside and I knew that Fort Lauderdale had kind of a big sort of gay area. So I think something inside of me was kind of like, I need to go there. Like I need to be around that. Um, I think it was just like inching me like one step closer to, you know, ultimately coming out um, as bi. But um, so, yeah, I think it was a combination of all of those things. But, um, you know, Florida's great. Um I, we won't get into politics, but, so I <laughs> um, there's some about Florida I can don't necessarily like, but but um, you know Florida also has an expiration date. You know, like it's climate wise, like it's you know I think some scientists say it's supposed to the entire state's supposed to be underwater in like 50 years. You know, um, so so it's great for now. It's home. I was just in New York City um, for like I flew out um, Sunday morning did the shoot Sunday afternoon and then flew back this morning. So if I have bags under my eyes, that's why. But when I got home, I was just like, oh, this feels good. Like, this feels like home. Like, this is my home now, you know? Um, so when the captain got on the mic and he was like, oh, it's 87 degrees. I was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, that's what I know. So, so, yeah. I get that. Yeah. So one of my final questions is you talked well, two-part question. A, what was coming out like for you? And B, do you get any hate for being bi from the gay community? Oh, dude, we could do a whole separate podcast on on being gay. And I, I know you've talked to some other people about it. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, I, I do. Um, and it's funny because I have... Kind of both sides, right? So I have some gay guys who are like, oh my God, that's hot as fuck. You know, um, I love seeing you, you know, eat a pussy or, you know, fuck a woman. Like, and then I have the other half where like, oh, you betrayed us. You know, how could you? You know, I don't want to see this shit, blah, blah, blah. So I've had, um, I've gone back and forth and it's, it's very telling on my Twitter too, because I look at the, you know, the statistics or even just the likes in general and, um, you know, anything by I post, like, to use your terminology. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the gay shit is just like, yay, you know. Um, it's a little bit different on my OnlyFans. Like, my OnlyFans, um, it's it's not quite the opposite, but they're a little bit even um, in terms of the buy and the gay content, in terms of the, the number of likes. And anyone who hasn't checked out your analytics on OnlyFans, definitely do it. Like, I discovered I have, like, a huge following in South Korea. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, that's so fucking random. Like, um, but yeah, definitely check it out. It's super interesting. But so, yeah, being bi, dude, is, you know, um, you get it from the straight community and then you get it from the gay community as well. Um, there are rare exceptions. Like, and, and it sucks because I actually want to do more bi content. Um, that's sort of my goal. Like, my goal ultimately is to be like a Dante Cole or like a Jaden Marcos, you know, um, who kind of seamlessly like goes back and forth between, um, you know, those two worlds. And you're starting to see it more and more, like more sort of, um, like I think um, Roman Todd is like doing, you know, some straight shit now. Um, Dylan Diaz, um, they're shooting like some bi scenes. So it's starting to become a little bit more commonplace. But the main roadblocks are, you know, once you've done gay, none of the straight studios want to hire or use you. Um, and it's usually because the women, and I've had women straight up say, I don't want to shoot with a bi dude, you know, or I don't want to shoot with a guy who's done gay content. Um, there's some cool ass women who are usually by themselves who, you know, are totally all about it and into it. Um, and I actually have some shoots coming up for um, 
for the Exotica in Miami next month in July. Um, so for those of you who like my buy, buy content, look for that. Um, but yeah, it's so hard, dude. Like I've tried, like, I can't tell you like countless times to, um, to kind of break in, but, um, you know, it's, I think it's just about being persistent and finding the right people. Um, so, but yeah, the gay community is, I think, very protective of their own. And, um, I, I don't know what, I mean, you're, you're bi or do you consider yourself bi or pan or, or what? Like. I just right. say sexual, right. like it really comes down to the person. So, um, so I don't know. I mean, what's been your experience like when you put stuff with women? Because you also shoot with trans too, right? Which I don't. Yeah. So, the trans content's kind of in yeah. the middle. Really, I don't get too much right. pushback. I would say the trans man, male content is more popular than the trans okay. female. But definitely, I get any time I've shot with a biological woman, it's there's a lot yeah. more pushback. And I'll even get comments and shit on my Instagram, like, oh, I got to tell you, you know, you fucking women, I got a real problem with that. I'm like, yeah, you know, just, I, what do you care? Like, I, I don't, I don't get why yeah. that's a big deal. Yeah. You know, and, and also, I'm severely limited based on you right. know, where I live because right. it's like, I was in LA or Vegas or Miami or whatever, like finding women to shoot would be much easier. Finding women to shoot with in Denver. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's pretty difficult. So, I mean, we'll see, like, you know, I'm just gonna keep trying. And, um, but, um, I think I've had a couple people recommend to me. Um, actually I'm shooting with this, um, this one woman next month and she um she was like you know you should start like a separate twitter for your straight stuff or your straight buy stuff um and then you know have one just for the gay stuff and she mentioned a couple of people out there who've been you know are successful at it who've done that um so i've thought about doing that um but then you know part of me is just like fuck it this is who i am like i'm not gonna like you know separate like this part of me from you know like so I don't know. We'll see. But it's definitely tricky. I do want to do more straight shit, though. Like, um, the women that I'm into, at least, like, porn-wise, like, are, you know, untouchable. Like, unless you're freaking J-Mac or, like, you know. Um, but, like, I like the women who have, like, ridiculously, like, big tits. Like, Tanya Baraga, um, Ava Devine. Like, <laughs> I'm talking, like, seriously. Like, I don't know. This term turns oh my god how old is Ava divine now god she i still remember. fucking looks incredible like um yeah, i remember jerking out to her like 15 <laughs> years ago yeah <laughs> um there's a oh there's an older one too her name's claudia marie you should check her out she's like i mean her tits are just absolutely like um but yeah i mean like valera castile so i mentioned savannah bond um robin banks like so i mean those are the women i'm attracted to so yeah there's like a bit of a you know a hike um to get to that point but you know the the buy scenes that i've done like there's a lot of like you know um like swinger kind of couples and stuff out there they tend to be like more receptive and open to um you know just shooting buy scenes so so we'll see but i definitely you know in terms of like future projects i sort of i want to continue down that path um and i you know i'll do the gay stuff too because yeah, I mean, I would recommend uh, Davin Strong and uh, Gunner Stone. Because they both seem to have done it semi-successfully. And actually, Davin Strong posted something on his Twitter. And he was actually talking about this exact issue. And he basically just, you know, talked about, you know, treating women with respect, being professional, you know, and basically just developing a reputation to the point that, your reputation precedes you so that when you reach out to a woman, she's like, Oh, okay. You know, I've heard of Dommies, you know, super professional, you know, as opposed to like, you know, cause you got to think if you're a woman, like, you know, you've got concerns over safety and, you know, and other shit. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, well, yeah. And I, I mean, a lot of that's valid, um, you know, in terms of like other STDs, like, I mean, gay shoots like especially like content wise like studios are different like studios do require testing but you know if you're just setting up like a content shoot like they're not fucking asking for testing like you know um but i think in terms of hiv like the gay community is much 
better protected than the straight community because everyone's on prep, you know. So, um, and I don't think this the same can be said for you know for the straight community. But I don't know. I mean, maybe everyone is on prep. But um, at any rate, um, so your other question uh, about coming out, um, sort of difficult. Um, yeah, I was in a relationship with a woman, um, my longest relationship to date, and, um, you know, I definitely was in love with her, um, and I could actually even see myself marrying her, um, but, um, you know, I would start to kind of have these moments of, you know, like checking out a guy and be like, okay, that's weird, why did I just do that? Or, um, you know, I'd see, like, a hot guy at the gym, and then, like, occasionally when I'd be having sex with her, I'd be like picturing that guy and stuff. And then I was like, okay, something's really wrong. I need to kind of take a step back and like, How old were you um, at this point? Uh-oh, we're getting into the age thing. This was maybe, this was relatively recently. So, um, yeah, oh, they maybe like All right. a year and a half, two years ago. So, um, so yeah, then it was just more a matter of like coming to terms and um you know i had a few good friends i talked to about it and um they kind of made me realize that staying in the relationship was not fair to you know either person um and so yeah just kind of went from there um so i kind of came out and went straight into doing porn (laughs) which um i don't know i think that was my way of just kind of fully embracing um my sexuality was to be as open with it possible and how much more open can you be than you know on camera (laughs) Um, so did you if this is too personal by all means tell me um so did you come right out and just tell her that or yeah yeah um you know it's obviously a very difficult situation um but you know i think when you love someone then you want them to be happy ultimately and even if it's a bitter pill to swallow in terms of you know how they get to that happiness um so you know we're still close um you know not as close obviously but um yeah i mean honesty is the best policy right like you you can't you know i know i've i've heard of so many people who stay in marriages you know for the wrong reasons or they stay closeted in marriages and like you're just destroying both of your lives you know like at the end of the day like you're just you're not doing anyone any favors like um so yeah i mean it kind of all came together where i was like i'm gonna be who i am i'm gonna do porn (laughs) um i'm just gonna be i'm just gonna do what i want so yeah wow that uh the reason i ask that is because I've got a number of subscribers who are in that same oh, yeah. position, you know, where they've been in a long-term relationship or they're married to a woman and now they're starting to have these feelings yeah. and like, you know, not really sure. What it's to do scary. It. It's terrifying. It's, it's, um, it's hard. Um, I, I would say I was fortunate in that I did have people I could talk to. Um, and I would say that was my saving grace. Um, you know, I would say if you do to those people out there, if you do, you know, um, have anyone you trust and you feel like you can confide in to do that and to seek their counsel and um, advice. Um, and, you know, therapy helps too. Um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in like therapy and, um, you know, getting to know yourself and improving upon yourself and dealing with your, you know, issues demons everyone has them um i don't think anyone gets out of childhood unscathed (laughs) um so you know i think um i think everyone's case individual case is different but i I think ultimately at the end of the day you just you you have to live your truth and you have to be you know true to yourself so so your ethnicity is cuban half white half cuban yeah but i speak no spanish (laughs) I'm a bad Latino. Um, my parents divorced. I was raised by my white mother, and she saw to it that I did not take 
Spanish or learn any Spanish. So um, I took French. So we can have a conversation in French. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm constantly made fun of by my fellow Latin friends for <laughs> for not knowing Spanish. And dude, I'm like, I mean, I live like, you know, an hour from Miami where like, if you go to Miami, like everyone's speaking Spanish, like, you know, English is the second language there. So, so yeah, it's, it's a little hard and shaming, but you know, I've come to accept it. So, so mm, there's a reason I'm asking is, so the Latin culture, you didn't grow up with that, like the Cuban Latin. Okay. No. All right. Um, I mean, I wish it's, it's obviously a part of my heritage. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think, um, it's a side of me that I need to embrace more and um, obviously industry as well too. Um, you know, like I just, the shoot that I did up in New York was a Latin orgy, you know, and, um, you know, I think fellow Latinos, people of color in general have to, um, uplift each other and stick together. Um, you know, particularly in this industry. And, and I'd like to be more a part of that. And, um, so getting, you know, I, I think more in, um, in tune with my, my, you know, Latino culture, I think would help that and help enrich, enrich that part. Of me, so. Yeah, no, the, the reason I asked is because, uh, I was wondering if you felt like if, if that was the case, if you felt like that's what, if that impacted you coming out, because like Latin's they're typically very like you better not be gay and cubans oh. are like notoriously the worst 100 yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah yeah i mean no. so it's a good thing you didn't no i didn't that. because i and my my father's deceased I haven't had a relationship with even when he was alive didn't have much of a relationship with him um or his side of the family and um so yeah fortunately i i haven't had to encounter that but trust me i've heard and i've heard horror stories and um you know i witnessed firsthand it's a lot of like it's the whole like machismo macho like you know plus like the religious aspect to it as well like mostly catholic and you know so um you know but i've always just come from a place of you know fuck that <laughs> so I'm curious, though, like, this is a question for the viewers and for me, but, like, you you didn't experience any of that same-sex attraction prior to, to what you did? It's interesting, prior. looking back, because it's forced me to kind of look back. Um, I looked back, and um, there are moments throughout my childhood where like it's almost like a polaroid picture or something i can pinpoint like and look back and say that was a sign that you know so like for instance oh. there's this boy i still remember his name i'm not gonna say his name but um and uh he was in like my music class and uh i remember just looking over him at one point and I had to have been like, I mean, this was in junior high, so, you know, prepubescent, like, um, so I just remember looking over him at one point and like feeling a little like tingling sensation, like down there <laughs> and not recognizing like what that was or why that was happening. Um, but also at the same time being like, that's weird that it's happening with a boy, you know, but of course, like <sighs> suppress that. You know, like, you know, um, so there are moments like looking back now where I can be like, ah, okay, you know, um, but, you know, I mean, we talked about being put into boxes and labels and all of that earlier and society does that in particular, American society and culture. And, um, you know, you just kind of stay in your lane and stay in the box that you've, you know, been put in and um, learn to like suppress urges and, and all of that. So um, I'm very much of the opinion that, sexuality is, I mean, I think it's genetic. Um, I think, um, you know, no one chooses obviously to be gay or, um, I think, you know, it's ridiculous for people to even argue that because who would choose a life of, you know, ridiculed and ostracized and, you know, um, <laughs> um, you know, completely marginalized and all of that. Um, but 
I also think our concept of sexuality has changed tremendously over the years, um, in addition to society being more tolerant in general. Um, like 20 years ago, the term non-binary never existed. You know, like we didn't talk about pronouns. Um, we didn't talk about, you know, um, having non-binary bathrooms and, you know, <laughs> grade school. Like, so I think it's become a lot more fluid and it makes me hopeful that, um, you know, I think Generation X coming up now has, or not Generation X, Generation Z coming up now, like, has a much more healthier um, and realistic outlook on sexuality and the spectrum of sexuality than sort of the the confines of what we were living in the past. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. And the reason I laughed is the best uh, reason I've ever heard is it, uh, I was talking to someone, they're like, you want to know how I know how I can prove the sexuality is not chosen? Because if people could choose their sexuality, the vast majority of the women would be fucking lesbian because it'd be sick of men. I shit. love that. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and it's so fucking true, too. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. No, that's, 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 I mean, the same way that being, I don't, being trans isn't a choice, you know? Like, um, I mean, who would choose to, you know, um, to, to be just subjected to all of that, you know, if, um, unless it's what they truly, truly felt in their hearts, you know? Um, so, um, I think, I hope, you know, we're getting smarter, knock on wood, we're getting smarter about it as a society and as a world and as a people. Um, I think the days of ostrich, ostrich, Jesus, I can't talk, ostracization are, you know, becoming fewer and far between. And, um, you know, I mean, it's like world news now if, like, a culture or people, like, you know, have some huge, like, anti-gay agenda. Like, I think, what was it, Uganda recently, like, passed some, you know, legislation, like, you know, outright banning, like, and there was this huge, like, outcry from the majority of the world. So I think we're getting there. Um, you know, but then again, you have things like, you know, banning trans, like, you know, uh, drag performers from baseball games happening, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, um, I don't know though. I feel like, I feel like the bisexual thing is still stuck in the fucking stone. Oh, for sure. Yeah. By, 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 like, I, I don't understand. Like you would have assumed that shit would have right. came around by now. Right. Well, I... but it's still, like you said, it's, you're, you get shit from both yeah. ends. Of well, I think because it's like people don't understand it, you know. Um, and I think it's like people want you to pick a, pick and choose a side and stick with it. <laughs> and I think a lot of people feel threatened by the fact that, you know, you can be equally attracted to and have amazing sex with, you know, either or. Um, so. Yeah, but being bi has been around since, fuck, before I was born. Yeah. Like what the fuck? I know. I don't know. I mean I think um I think that needs to be examined. Someone needs to write that book, Jason. <laughs> someone probably has maybe someone probably has write written it. that book. We probably just haven't read it yet, but um, I'm sure there have been multiple books written about it, but um but yeah, it is it is a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? Yeah. It's just I don't know. I mean <sighs> This isn't really politically correct to say, but uh, like most... the no go ahead. the on the buy issue, I can understand. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I can understand the reservations coming from the straight side, particularly from women, because your average stereotypical straight woman does not know as much about HIV as you and I do. Most people, like I had a human sexuality professor who didn't even know what okay. prep was. And this okay, is I can understand that to to an extent, though. But gay people, bi people can get tested the same way that straight people can get tested. So if I pass my test yeah. two weeks prior to our shooting, you know that's the same. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not oh, talking okay, about. Okay. I, I'm just talking about like like right, okay. dating. You know, Jane yeah, and yeah. Bob Smith. So, like, if Jane Smith is apprehensive about dating a bi guy, I'm not saying it's right, but if she doesn't have all the knowledge, I can understand why she would be like, me, 
But for gay dudes to be apprehensive to the buy, that's where I'm like, what the fuck? Think- like, you've right. been, you know, look down. Like, that just, I can't justify that in any way, shape, or form. Do you see what Elaine, I'm getting I agree at? with you. Um, and the only answer I can really come up with is for whatever reason they see it as some sort of, like, betrayal, you know. Um, uh, I, you know, I can't figure it out. So I think it's a, it's a, I don't, it'd be curious to know what the percentage is, you know, um, maybe we can do another poll too, <laughs> but, um, you know, and I don't know how truthful people would be in that poll, but I don't know. It's, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, so jealousy maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I, I think you would be onto something there. Cause like, I'm I'm really like dumbing this down, if you will, but like I know a lot of gay men will get bitter, or maybe not the best word, but like if they see a guy with a woman because they feel like that woman is taking that guy right. away from them, it's like they, oh, if she didn't exist, right. he would be with right. me. Well, yeah, that and the whole I mean, what gay guy hasn't fantasized about you know converting a straight man? or, um, you know, seducing a straight man. I mean, that shit still goes on, you know? And then you throw in the whole DL culture, and, like, I mean, it's just, it gets way too, like, confusing, and, you know? So, um, to just let people be who they want to be, <laughs> like, that's, you know? So, I mean, they're going to be haters, they're going to be, you know, like, I've gotten very good at blocking people on Twitter. <laughs> it's, one of, it's become one of my favorite pastimes. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, there are more important things to argue about and worry about and stress about and, um, you know, just let people be. So, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Yeah. But I mean, do you, I, like, you predominantly date, you've predominantly dated men, right? Like, what percent? Um, uh, four, four men, three trans, the rest oh, wow. biological. Okay. One. Wow. So, that's a yeah. pretty healthy cross section. You know, yeah, of the population. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 if I were to post like pictures uh-huh. of all my exes on the screen, you'd be like, yeah. "What the fuck?" There's literally no discernible right. physical pattern in yeah, any yeah. way, shape. Wow. Well, like the only commonality would be like. Okay, but I heard once. Didn't you say that you predominantly dated like black, black men or? Like, uh, I've predominantly okay. dated people of okay. color. So yeah, only two oh, wow. of my exes okay. were white. So there is like some trends there at least, but but yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things I love about you and respect of you and what initially I never told you how I discovered you. By the way, um, I. Yeah, it wasn't like on Twitter, it wasn't like Instagram or anything like that. I was curious about, because I was thinking about porn, you know, and I was like, okay, how do they stay hard for, you know, 12 hour shoots, this, that, and the other. And so I learned about Trimax and I was like, okay, let me find out about Trimax. So I go on YouTube, Trimax, and your fucking podcast comes up out of all everything, like anyone go on YouTube, you know, like put in Trimax, like out of all the garbage out there, like most of it is just like, you know, this is what it is, like... You know, um, like some of them will have like demos on how you inject, but like you gave the most thoughtful, like thorough, um, personal, like impressive, like description of Trimax and your experience with it um, that like I've ever been able to find out there. Um, so could you, my friend, but that's how I was like, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? I was like, he's hot as fuck. Like what? He does porn. Like, okay, well, let me go check this out. So that's how I discovered you. Yeah. Wow. But, um, I'm not sure how many views oh, that, that particular podcast got, but, um, no, it's yeah, one of my most yeah. Popular. but, um, so yeah, I, I think that, um, you, not just that, but in terms of your content and, you know, in, in embracing like, everyone and you know every body type and um you know diversity i just um, have a tremendous amount of respect for you plus that and you know everything that you've gone through up until now um 
and the fact that you've been able to talk about it so openly, you know, your, your, your childhood and, um, still be such like a kind, loving, um, happy person is just like unreal to me. So you're an exceptional human being, Jason, you are. So, and role model, I think a lot of people. I, yeah, no, I, I get that. It's still uh, kind of hard to wrap my head around, but no, I, I really appreciate it. And that's why I was like, I want to talk to this dude. I want to be on his podcast. I want to be able to tell him face to face, you know, what he's, he's meant to me. And I think I'm sure to, you know, thousands of other people and, um, you know, keep doing what you're doing, bro. I think, you know, there's, there's a dearth out there for this, for this type of dialogue, and not just in the industry, but just as humans, you know, and, um, you know, it's not, I mean, half your po podcasts aren't even about porn, you know, it's about like society and like, you know, other stuff. So, um, you know, I think, um, you know, I think you're providing a great service and um, um, I, I really just applaud you. So. Oh, well, thank you. No, I... I, I think what, I, I don't know, I, I think the thing that I appreciate the most about these porn star confessions is just that every single yeah. one's unique. Like, and, and for those of you watching, like me and Dom did not talk prior to this. There's no list of right. talking points. Like, a gentleman I'm interviewing later this week, he's like, is there a pre-interview? You know, can I get a list of questions? I'm like, yeah. oh. <laughs> Like it goes where it goes. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what does the future look like for you? Like, I mean, fast forward ten years. Where, where do you um, want to be? I don't know if I'll be performing. Um, I mentioned I really sort of like the producer sort of aspect of it. Um, so I can envision myself kind of doing that on some level. Um. You know, I like finding the talent, bringing the talent together, making a project work, like that's very exciting to me. Um, not really one of those people, like usually most people are like, oh, I want to direct, you know, <laughs> which don't really have that kind of um, interest or passion. But I think, you know, as I mentioned before, that performers make the best directors, um, you know, just because they, they have a, a unique perspective. Um, like if you look at like Trenton Ducati, who I think just won like, you know, a lifetime award or Graham, uh, grabby or something um you know i mean his stuff is amazing like luke and michael lucas like lucas entertainment like um you know so i would say probably more producing i'd like to do um you know more of the buy stuff um god willing <laughs> um you know like i said sort of like be at that level of like a Dante Cole or, um, you know, you mentioned Davin Strong, who's just hot as fuck. Um, so um, that's kind of how I envision it. Um, you know, maybe doing something similar to this, not necessarily, you know, like porn star confessions, but um, just a forum where people can, um, you know, kind of openly communicate and um, exchange ideas and dialogue, you know, about the industry. Um, so I think, you know, kind of just less in front of the camera and more behind the camera um, or behind the scenes, but still somehow involved in, in porn. Um, does that make sense? Hmm. No, it actually, it, but it makes now, perfect sense. While and I'm healthy, you know, I'm still able-bodied. My dick still works. <laughs> um you know, I still enjoy fucking, um, you know, in front of the camera. Um, I'm, I'm going to ride this wave for as long as I can um, and for as long as, you know, the industry will have me. But I think everyone physically reaches, like, you know, an expiration date where, you know, you got to kind of pivot and look at other things. Um, so I'm very passionate about um, health, wellness, like my past retail um, experience that sort of was where my focus was. So um, nutritional supplementation, I truly believe nutrition is everything that the majority of illnesses, physical illnesses in our society are, are can all be tied back to poor nutrition. Um, so um, that's, I'm very passionate about that as well. So maybe doing something with it, like the supplement industry as well. Um, you know, it's, it's insane. Like if you name me a supplement or name me a condition, I can name you like five supplements that like, 
you know, can be used to treat that particular condition as opposed to the pharmaceuticals, which just create new health conditions called side effects, you know? So, and we're like, consume over 75% of the world's drugs. And yet we're like, I think 74th in health, which means there's like 73 countries out there that are healthier than us. And yet we're consuming 75% of the world, the world's pharmaceuticals. So something is like broken in our, in our system. Um, and I think nutritional healing is, is the answer to fixing that. Yeah. I'll definitely be texting you about that in the future. Uh, yeah. two things first, based on what you said previously and based on our conversation leading up to it, I think one thing you'd be really good at is being like a studio owner. Thought about it. Cause a lot of what you described Describe yeah, I thought that. about it. Um, yeah, I um, definitely something worth looking at, considering pursuing. Um, I just feel like every other day, some new studio is popping up, and someone's like throwing a shingle on their door. You know, <laughs> their door's down to me. Like, okay, I'm a studio owner, and I'm gonna start producing porn. And it's so competitive, dude. And it's just um, you know, and especially with content creation being what it is, and um, you know, even more and more of these sites popping up. Like I looked at your page and you have like like 15 different sites. Like I have, you know, I can't even, the three that I'm on, like, um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, do you think studios have a future? Like, or do you think like they're ultimately on their way out? Like, um, I think studios have to adapt because I think what's leading to the rise in, Amateur, and I use the term amateur to describe just non-studio. Yeah. But like, your average viewer isn't stupid. And if something's real, yeah. they can tell. Like, like, like my subscribers, like I had mentioned Art mm-hmm. Coyote earlier. Like the comments on that, they're like, "Holy shit, the chemistry is unreal!" Like the passion of this and that, blah blah. blah. Or you know, when I shoot with Jesse Dubai, like, and I, I think with like the fan sites, your average consumer is like, "Yeah, I prefer this because it's more real, it's more authentic." Like, I can tell these two people are actually talking into each other versus like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. I, I, know, and I mean, if you think that. about it, like your average person, like fast forwards through all of like the dialogue shit anyway, <laughs> leading up to the sex, whereas content creation like just cuts to the chase. I mean, there's gonzo porn for sure, but um, I don't know. And there's the flip side. There is something beautiful about like a really well done like porn production that has like, you know, glossy production and dialogue and you know um so i mean there's a reason they have award shows for for that shit right um so i mean there's something to be said for both but i think you're right i think um, they have been forced to adapt and i think they're going to have to continue to adapt even more in order to remain relevant um so um but there's so many different niches right like i mean there's like a porn studio for everything now like you know it's a studio for you know every freaking that as you can imagine like so so yeah it's a i think you know it's a billion dollar industry and it's there's room for everyone i guess yeah okay Okay. i'm back yeah so what's interesting though is when you talked about nutrition is (laughs) i was actually asking myself that same thing the other day because like when i'm in the u.s i Dude, I fucking fart so much, it's unreal. And, like, my farts smell <laughs> like shit. Like, I, I tell anyone who spends a lot of time with me, I'm like, damn, you must really love me. Because I can't even fucking see my own farts. And, like, I have digestive issues yeah. and all kinds of shit. But when I go to Mexico every year for 10 days to two weeks, I yeah. don't fart at all. Like, all my shit right. seems to disappear. And it's because there, like, I'm eating, like, nothing but real whole actual food. And, like, even certain things taste better there because using right. the real shit is actually cheaper than the artificial yeah. fucking yeah. 
Crap. Yeah, and I mean, that's just it. Like, we're inundated in, like, processed foods and chemicals. And, you know, um, I started reading labels, like, a long time ago, maybe about 10 years. And, like, I mean, yeah, if you flip over your average package of something and you start looking at the label, like, you're, it blows your mind, you know? And then you start to get into, like, GMOs, you know, I mean, which are just rampant. And, like, they even had, like, code words for GMOs. Like, somebody says natural flavors on the back. That's, like, GMO. You know, like, and most people don't know that. They think, oh, natural flavor. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, like, an app you can get on your phone. It actually tells you all the kind of um, things to look for that, like, you know. Um, so, yeah, dude, I, I, yeah, I went through a period where I was just like, okay, or only organic, nothing processed, whole foods only. Um, and it's fucking hard, like, especially if you're trying to bodybuild, right? So, um, I mean, who can fucking afford to eat, like, you know, like beef and cage free grass fed this that you know it's like 24 7 like it's it's not tenable and most people like you know they don't have a whole foods down the street or like you know so um so yeah it's um it's really about eating as clean as possible um and um staying away from the processed stuff but yeah i mean that's 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 like proof right there you know when you go and kind of start exposing your body to a cleaner diet then you're it manifests itself. Um, oh, the change is like yeah. instant. So we're eating lots of like vegetables, like beans, like yeah, yeah, yeah. when I'm in Mexico, just tons fresh, and tons yeah. of seafood. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like that's ninety percent right. of my diet when I'm yeah. there. So yeah, you know, it's just a lot of people intrinsically too. They have, and there's all kinds of like different diets out there there's like my mother's actually really into um it's called the blood diet where like you eat according to your blood type the blood type diet. um oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. like i buy into some of it but not like all of it but um you know i mean there's i think a lot of people have intrinsic like food allergies too um there's actually tests that you can get done and you know they'll test like you know 500 different types of foods um, um that you can get tested for and like a lot of people will realize that there are or not know that they're allergic to stuff and they continue eating it and, you know, they'll have digestive issues or, you know, things like that. Um, so, and like the common ones are, you know, like dairy, um, corn, soy, actually chocolate's a big one, obviously nuts, you know, tree nuts, that sort of thing. Um, and gluten, you know, um, so I think, um, again, like with most things, you know, like with smoking in the past or, you know, um, any kind of thing that we discover, you know, oops, down the road, like this is bad for you. Um, you know, we're discovering, you know, um, things and getting smarter about it. Like you find more and more gluten-free things now and more people are, you know, um, knowledgeable about that. Like a lot of people I know just don't do any dairy. Like I still don't do dairy. Um, it's just not good for you. Um, so, and then, you know, there are certain foods that are inflammatory as well inherently. Like a lot of people think legumes are good for you. They're actually inflammatory. Um, so, I mean, they do have nutritional value. But so it's it's different for everyone, you know, I think. But um, it's definitely worth investigating and kind of finding out the, what what works for you. So, Dude, that, yeah. that's so fire. Like when did you get that was recent, right? Here, the tat on your head. What? Oh, yeah, no, that was like yeah, was three, say, four weeks ago. That's sick. <clears throat> yeah, no. It's one of my favorite quotes. It's uh, actually by Ooh. Mike Tyson. It says, "Discipline is doing what you hate to do, to do, but doing it like wow. you love it." It's pretty profound. Um, yeah, he's he's evolved a lot. Like he's a very learned person. I think most. Yeah. yeah, no, it's like, that's one thing I love about Mike Tyson, because, you know, he's not very bright, like, you know, for most of his life, you know, he had, what, like, a fifth grade right. education or something, like, when he talks, like, you're like, okay, this dude's not very bright, but he's, like, become yeah. quite the philosopher, and, like, very profound, right. and you're just like, yeah. oh, shit. Well, okay. he's been through a lot, I guess, his life experience, and, um, you know, has, has taught him a lot, so, you like fighters, though, too, right? I saw you, you like McGregor. Yeah, yeah. But yep. No. I, did you watch I that uh, new Netflix documentary out on him? Like, is it any good? I did. It is. Yeah. No, it's really good, and it it I I like that it shows another side of him because I actually just got okay. tattoo of Conor McGregor, and like I got a 
bunch of hate messages on Instagram, like, fuck that arrogant piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, that's like right. bravado. That's his yeah. personality, you yeah. know, professionally. Yeah. Like, he, you know, if you actually listen to him talk, he's actually a very right. humble, grateful yeah. guy. Yeah, he's been on the joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm curious, though. Um, one of my final questions for you is, do you, how do I want to say this, uh, do you have difficulty separating who you really are, your real true personality and Dom, or are they the same? No. Dom's a, Dom's a no? persona that I created. Dom is like a suit of armor I put on, I suit up, and I become Dom, so... Um, I mean, you're talking, you're talking to me, like the real me right now, but yeah, when I'm in front of the camera, it's like game on, you know? So does that make sense? Like, do you do the same thing? Like, like, I mean, you, you've got to have some sort of separation, right? Like, um, mm, I try to keep it as authentic okay. as I possibly can. I would think the the like the biggest difference, and I'm sure you've heard me talk to other people about this, but it's like in my content, like I'll shoot in all kinds yeah. of different positions and all kinds of shit. In my private life, missionary yeah. and writing. Yeah. If you want anything else, right, it ain't happening. No, but it's an interesting you know, question. Stuff like I, that. Would, I would be curious to again another poll um to kind of pull you know um people who do porn to see how many people you know find it necessary to keep them completely you know bifurcated um and how many people kind of have them you know fused together um i would imagine most people say like they that there's some separation there um you know whether it be like me a suit of armor that i then take off and kind of put away to the side until i'm ready to you know be dom again or if it's like you know uh i mean someone like you who you know i mean i truly believe you're authentically yourself like 100 percent of the time you know um which is not to say i'm not authentic like this entire interview has been authentic like it's been me but in terms of the actual like performance um like for instance i'm doing and i've done in the past like raised fornication parties where he has you know guest porn stars or whatever and i mean that's just that's i mean you have to like put on a show for that right like you have to like so i mean that's an example of what i'm talking about like um where people have this expectation that you know you're going to be a certain type of way and you have to live up to that expectation so and i've even actually had people tell me that <laughs> like you know so like oh i came to see you i came to see dom you know they didn't come to see like you know so, yeah. so yeah, um, I think in that sense, um, but I think, um, yeah. So, on that front, Tucker, come here, come here, buddy. Uh, the one thing that I was going to ask, though, is because you're super, super verbal in your content. Are you just as verbal off camera, or do you, like, kind of play that? Um way? I play it up, but it also kind of depends on who I'm shooting with. Um, you know, I've shot scenes with dudes who, like, and this is one of my biggest pet peeves, like, bottoms who don't make it. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, are you there? Like, do you have a pulse? Like, what the fuck? Like, um, so if someone's really verbal with me, I'm going to be just as, I'm going to give it back to them, you know? Um, and that shit, like, turns me on. Like, um, if I get someone who's, like, really quiet, meek as a mouse, like, I may not be as verbal. Um, so it kind of depends on the vibe. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting because my sex life has completely changed since I started doing porn. So um, I, I, I don't even know if I used to be as verbal as I was, you know, um, prior to doing it. Um, I think, uh, sometimes it translates into, you know, real world sex. Um, and I, sometimes I catch myself and like, Oh, <laughs> I just say that, you know, but, um, and it's different when you're fucking women too. Like, you know, in straight porn, like the dude's quiet, like the dude doesn't fucking make any noise. Like it's all about like the 
most of the time you don't even see the dude's face you know you just see his dick um so i find that when i'm fucking women too i'm a lot less verbal um and so i sort of give them the some women are turned on by it but like um i find that the people who are watching like the straight or bi porn like they don't want to hear the dude you know they just want to hear like a woman so um so yeah it varies but i would say i'm i've always been kind of verbal across the board like um so but i you know i tone it down or tone it up depending on what you're going with and what the vibe is. Yeah, no, you and I are definitely in agreement on yeah. our partner. Almost someone who's not making a sound. Dude, like, it's the worst <laughs> fucking thing. Like, it could be, like, the hottest person, too, but, like, if you're not, like, reciprocating, like, then you fuck it, you know? It's a huge turnoff, like... So. Yeah, no, if, if I don't think yeah. you're into it, that just yeah. kills it for me. Yeah. Fuck that. But, um, so for everyone watching, if they want to find like your content, your social media, sure. Um, Twitter stuff? is just Dom Yamas, so D O M L L A M A S X X X. Um, and then, uh, Instagram is Dom Yamas, same thing except just two X's. Um, so Twitter, Yamas X X X, Instagram, Dom Yamas X X. And then, really, the only other thing I'm on is, um, uh, raw fuck club um so i've thought about like everyone keeps telling me i should go on just for fans like many vids like all of that i just haven't had the time or the patience to do that so um so oh, oh my oh, sorry my only fans yeah so only fans is um also dom yamas xxx and then um raw fuck club is uh raw fuck club dot com uh dom yamas xxx so it's pretty consistent across the board except for um instagram which we all know how i feel about instagram right now so um so yeah um i uh really hit 25k oh. on my twitter so i'm very happy about that i know it's not the greatest but it's I'm, I'm happy with the number because it's it's like all real people like there are no bots or anything um so um you know and for someone who's only been doing this a short time i'm kind of proud of that and i just i love my fans um they contact me i just want to thank them for all of their support and thank you once again for continuing to do what you do and for being who you are and such a giving caring person and um you know providing this platform for all of us awesome well thank you very much for agreeing to do this i really appreciate it and i I, I love the fact that we talked about a lot of things that I haven't covered. Oh, good. I feel special then. <laughs> um, and I definitely want to make it out to Denver because I know you don't travel. So, um, yeah, it'd be cool to actually meet you in person and, you know, chill and um, see what trouble we can get into. I'd love to meet your, love to meet your pig. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are, they are I a can... handful, but they're awesome. And yeah, no, we definitely go to the gym and I get to think of quite a few people. Cool. You awesome. With. All right. Well, yeah. And, uh, and I can show you arm breasts. I don't know if you're familiar uh -huh. with that gym. It's like a world payment. Like, uh, oh, yeah, of course. Phil, he, he actually came into, um, the store that I work at not too recently. So yeah, I was like, I kept double taking. I was like, that's fucking Phil. Oh. He's like, and he kind of. Hey guys, just wanted to say thank you for watching this video, and if you did really enjoy it, I just wanted to mention there are two ways that you can help to support this channel. On the right side, there are three little dots. If you click those, there is a super thanks button, and on the left-hand side, there is a join button where you can join this channel. There are three different tiers of memberships. The top tier does actually allow one-on-one -on -one messaging with me via Discord, and I personally answer that. It is not a service. That's just, you know, both of those are ways that you can help support me as a content creator in this channel. I mention this because YouTube is by far the thing that I enjoy doing the most. It's the thing I'm most passionate about. And unfortunately, a lot of the sexual videos, the porn star confessions, the dom sub, all that stuff, it is not monetized due to the nature of the videos. But either way, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you guys all have an absolutely amazing week. I love you all.